Hey, so welcome back. We've been working in our rotational unit talking about some of the foundational ideas here. So I just want to quickly do a net torque example problem so you can see how this works out. So if you take a look here, you've got a cylinder that has actually two different radii involved, like one cylinder that is closer to us from this point of view and another cylinder that's in the background. And there are two forces involved. There's a force to the right on the outermost cylinder and there's a force going downwards. The two cylinders are connected and some of the details are up there. I have included some of the details in the diagram here. We do have the radius of the core in meters, radius of the larger drum, the force that's involved here, and the force that's involved here. That's essentially all we need to be able to solve this problem. One thing I want to remind you about is that a torque that is measured in the counterclockwise direction as measured from the positive x-axis is going to be considered to be a positive torque and you could say this is a positive angle over here if you're measuring from below the positive x-axis we could call that clockwise and say that as a negative rotation with a negative torque and a negative angle involved just by convention that's how we do it so we consider this direction counterclockwise to be positive this direction clockwise to be negative Okay, and so we want to go ahead and solve the problem. We're going to go ahead and write out the equation as we see it on the AP equation sheet. So these symbols, just as a quick reminder, mean that these things are all vectors that we're multiplying together. And I talked about this in the last screencast, but this is a cross product. These happen to be at right angles to each other. In other words, the radius here is at a right angle to this force. So you could say they are already in the format that we need to just simply multiply them together. In other words, they are already at right angles to each other. So that issue we're not going to worry about. I have dealt with that issue on the previous screencast. So let's go ahead and just think about how to do a problem like this. We do want the net torque. So we're going to add up the torque from both of these. So the net just means the sum of these things. So we're going to have a torque that is counterclockwise, a torque that is clockwise. We'll go ahead and make that torque negative by convention and solve for the overall torque that we're going to end up with. We go ahead and continue with the equation here, inserting in what torque is equal to, insert some numbers here, solve for our unknown. Notice that we get a negative answer. A couple things to say about this answer. It's going to be negative. What that means is overall you're going to have a rotation that is going to be clockwise by our definition here. So you could look at this and say, wait a second, this is 4.33 newtons and this is 6.59 newtons. I would expect that we would have a counterclockwise rotation because this has a greater force. And the answer is, well, you need to think about the force multiplied by that distance because torque is impacted by the distance by which the force is applied. Remember the example of the door. If you apply the force on the door farther away from the hinge, you get more torque. That's what's happening here. Even though this is a lesser force, it's going to create a greater torque because it's applied at a further distance from the center of the cylinder. The other thing I want to quickly mention is notice that our units are in Newton meters. These, while having the same form as joules, are not exactly the same as joules. In other words, we, by convention, talk about torque as Newton meters. Whereas joules are like in terms of say work or energy, we're talking about a force applied over a distance. Lastly, what's, what is the issue with this? Like our net torque, why is that important? And that is a good question. That is very similar to saying, what's the point of force? I, when I first learned force, I didn't see there was an, there was an idea for force. You probably know F equals MA. It is the most famous equation in physics, most likely, aside from E equals MC squared. This is how it's on the equation sheet for AP. If you take a look at it, these are just rewritten variations of the same thing, so to speak. You can draw a perfect analogy over here with the rotational version of this. So we have yet to talk about some of these variables here, but basically this is going to be our angular acceleration. And this is our net torque up here. This I value represents the moment of inertia. So we're going to be talking about what the moment of inertia is how to solve problems using the rotational version of Newton's second law, and also how to calculate the moment of inertia because it's different for different shaped objects. So that is going to be the rotational version of mass. Angular acceleration is the rotational version of acceleration. And torque is the rotational version of force. 
At this point in your physics training, you probably recognize how important force is because it's the cause of translational motion. Down here, we can think of it as torque is the cause of rotational motion. In fact, you could even say force applied at a distance from the center of mass does cause rotational motion as well. But in any case, you can see that they're both very important with this and where hopefully you can see where we are going with this. There should be another connection to this screencast coming up as well.